I think kindness solves 99% of the challenges you will face in your life as a human being. Yes, oh it helps God. you get things done. Mm -hmm. It helps you create relationships with people that can help you. It helps you be less judgmental of other people and whatever they may be going through. But the thing that I think most entrepreneurs miss, I think there are many kind entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. They're very kind to their clients. They're very kind to their employees. But there's someone that they're not kind to themselves. To themselves. Welcome to the Kind Boss Podcast, brought to you by Outsourcing Angel, an Australian-based social enterprise that specializes in helping business owners free up their time and reduce staffing costs, while helping to create employment opportunities for people in developing countries. Visit OutsourcingAngel.com today. Now, let me welcome your host, Lynn Padetti. I'm Lynn Padetti, the host of the Kind Boss Podcast, the podcast that shines the spotlight on bosses that lead by doing good and being kind. And today, we'll be speaking to Joey Coleman, the founder of Design Symphony. With his 17 years of experience as chief experience composer, Joey helps businesses design the best and most engaging customer experiences. His customer retention strategies teach you how to give a musical experience that will create the most loyal fans and advocates for your business. Listen on as Joey takes you through the important stages and touch points that you need to be aware of to give a genuine and impactful experience to your customers today. Hello, Joey. Welcome to my show. Hello, I'm so, Yeah, hi. I'm so excited to have you on my show. Um, this show is called The Kind Boss Show and I really wanted to invite not just successful people in business or someone that's got a great business message to tell, but someone who I believe is also kind and have a kind message to, to tell. So that's why I invited you here. So welcome. Well, thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be here and thanks for having me on the show. I'm excited to hang out and chat. Great. Thank you. So Joey, I came across you, um, I think only the end of last year when I actually didn't know what my, I knew my problem, but I didn't know the solution to my problem. Mm -hmm. So for many years, I sort of had client retention problem, but I was really scratching my brain because we have a really, we were proud that we had great customer service, right? Whenever someone inquires, we're really quick to respond, but the client retention just wasn't really like, it was just, we couldn't fix it. It wasn't a lot, but it was still happening. And sure. we were thinking that the problem was that, uh, you know, their clients weren't ideal, that they couldn't afford our service. And there were all these, you know, trying different things. We even try to go into a different niche. And surprisingly, you know, God somewhere in the universe just sort of dropped. So I was speaking to a friend and he just mentioned your book quickly because I said something and he said, oh, that reminds me of this book called Never Lose a Customer Again. And the title of the book, by the way, is so catchy. I was like, oh, what is you. it? <laughs> And so I had no idea what this book was going to bring me, to be honest. I was just like, oh, very catchy title. And then when I read it, I couldn't put it down. And then I made a quick message to my, my whole team. Because normally as an entrepreneur, you read it. You read something and then you're the one executing it. You know, you're excited right. about it. But this was a book where you're like, oh, my God, everyone needs to read it. Because we all need to work on this together. And, oh, my God, this will solve all the problems that we've <laughs> ever had. <laughs> and so... But in, when January, so it was like sort of the end of December and we were like, the task is everyone read it, come back and we're going to execute it. So I've got to say between January and now we have been busy implementing this book. Awesome. So I love I, that is why I was excited to talk to you because I really love your book. <laughs> so, so Joey has an eclectic, crazy career path to get to where I got to today. Um, what I am today is I'm a professional keynote speaker. I travel around the world doing keynote presentations uh, on how to keep your customers. I also talk about employee experience as well. I'm an author. As you mentioned, I wrote a book called Never Lose a Customer Again. But how I got here was crazy. Uh, I was a criminal defense lawyer. I worked for the Secret Service, the CIA, and the White House. Uh, I did sold promotional products. I taught at the postgraduate level. I ran a branding and ad agency for yeah. 15 years. So I have this crazy background, but what the way I like to think of it is the common thread that connects all the jobs I've ever had and the path to where I am today is why do human beings do the things they do? 
And what can we do to convince them to do the things we'd like them to do? So when I was a criminal defense lawyer, it was what can I do to convince this jury to find my guy not guilty? When I was selling promotional products, it was what could we put our logo on and give to someone at a conference or a trade show that would make them remember us and think about us later? Uh, when I was designing logos, it was how could we design a brand image that when people see it, they would totally understand how we operate, what we stand for, and what we're all about. Wow, so amazing. all the different jobs kind yeah. of connect together in that regard. Yeah, so what was the pain point that made you want to think that way? Like throughout all of your jobs, like what, what made you interested in this area? And, and was there some sort of challenge that you went through? Yeah, well, I think it was one of those things where um, lots of times the path is easier looking backwards than looking forwards yeah. and trying to figure out where it's going. Um, what Where this really got its genesis and kind of connected all the dots, when I was running my ad agency, we were really good at driving new customers to my clients. They mm-hmm. would see the ads, they would come and they would do it. Um, but when I would talk to my clients afterwards about, oh, how has this affected your bottom line? I was talking to a client who had done this big ad campaign and rollout. And they said, Joey, we haven't seen it change the bottom line at all. Mm. And I couldn't understand that, Lynn, because I had seen the data. I knew the phone was ringing. I knew they were signing new customers. Yeah. I'm like, how is this not impacting your bottom line and your revenues? Mm. I asked them to give me access to all the data and we impact everything. And what we found is we were bringing new customers in like crazy, but their old customers were running out the back door. Oh my as quickly God. As we could bring them in the front. And I was like, wait a second, no matter how much money and time and effort we spend on marketing and sales, if we don't stop this bleeding, if we don't stop the hemorrhaging out the backside of the business, we're going to be in trouble. Yeah. And so that was kind of the genesis for saying, well, what would happen if we put the same level of intention and focus behind keeping our customers yeah. that we did to getting our customers? Yes. That's and then oh. it changed it overnight. Oh, God, I mean, yes. literally within a month, they started to see the numbers grow in two months and three months in very short order. They literally added seven figures to their bottom line because they were growing at a rate where they were keeping what they were growing instead of oh just my God. That's just music to my ears. And I think a lot of business owners are experiencing that because we're so, you know, what for myself, I get, cause I run a virtual assistant company and I was so proud that I have systems and process and it's almost like this machine that just can produce mm-hmm. the outcome. And so then I was really excited to bring more leads in. And then you realize that, Oh my God. Well, after reading your book, you, I realized there was just so much gap that I was, that, that was there, that, that's why clients were going. So you, you said that your clients was experiencing that, but how about yourself? When you were running that agency, did you have client retention kind of issue? You know, I think every business has some retention issues. Um, and I want to be very clear. I'm not the guy that says you should retain all of your clients. I absolutely yeah. believe that it's okay to not only lose some, but to fire some and to yeah. affirmatively decide we don't want them in the process. I had been very fortunate that for the most part, my business was growing, but what I realized too, and it's kind of, to be frank, how it shows up in my business today as a speaker, there are some businesses where once the customer buys from you, or once the customer has their relationship with you where they say, okay, we're going to give you our money, we're going to get the product or service, you don't have that much more to sell them. So like Mm. if hired me to design their logo. Yeah. Once we designed their logo, they weren't going to hire me to redesign the logo that we had yeah. just designed, right? Somebody yeah. hires me to come and give their keynote speech at their annual meeting. Well, it's going to be a minimum of a year before they have the potential to hire me again. And yeah. most likely, most companies don't want to have the same keynote speaker two years yeah. later. Sometimes you can do that, but usually yeah. you don't. So what I realized that I was doing in my own business was establishing the kind of relationship that two things would happen. Number one, if we delivered a remarkable experience that was so unexpected and so outlandish compared to what they were uh, planning on, they would tell all their friends about it. And that would lead to huge referrals and to huge inputs. Growing in terms of people that I wasn't marketing and selling to, my customers were marketing and selling to. Right? Number two, if we do a remarkable, fantastic job with a customer, in this product or in this offering, when they have use for us in the future, they will come back. 
So for example, I just had an email with someone that I haven't done. I um, did some private consulting and coaching with them probably about a year and a half ago. And out of the blue yesterday, I got an email that said, hey, I have got a new position. I sold that business. I'm in a new business and I would love to bring you in to work on my new business. Yeah. I didn't chase this person. I didn't, yeah. you know, you know, make sure that I was reaching out every 30 yeah. days. To, hey, what are you working on now with the hope of getting something? I stayed in touch, but it was more like when they would post on social media, I would comment about, oh, looks like you had a fun time at that birthday party or, oh, congratulations on, you know, the birth of your child or whatever it may be. It was less business and it was more yep. personal. Yeah. And as a result, I was top of mind. Yeah. When it came yeah, yeah. So what I love about your book is that, so we, a lot of us knew about customer service, customer experience. We've heard all that before. And I remember about two, three years ago, I went to Bali and I had such an amazing experience at this resort. Uh, it was a little touch that they did. You know, when I asked them where to go, instead of just pointing me where to go, they took me there and whatever. Came back so excited and said, we're, and the, the resort was called Rimba. Uh, so I was like, we're going to call this experience called the Rimba experience. And so we were really excited. I, well, I thought, oh my God, I came up with this really great idea. But you know, your book explains the process of the mindset of where the customer is at. Sort of like you educated us on the human psychic or uh, psyche or psychic, whatever it is. And so then it gives us more structure. And so now like I have much more in depth education to implement things. Cause so basically we implemented it two, three years ago, but it was very ad hoc. It was very like, we know that when we do something good, people like it. And so we just, yeah, it's sort of like just sporadic and have no idea. Uh, I guess there's no framework, no structure. So I really love that your book gives us the full education of, why, what, you know, the, the human um, psychology at, at every stage. And then you broke it down into those, as it, was it six stages or se- seven stages? Eight, 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 eight stages. Eight, eight, eight phases. Eight. Yeah. Is the eight phases that um, was so detailed. And even within, even the before them being a client, I couldn't believe how much things I could do to make them feel rimbered, <laughs> you know, ex- and uh-huh. loved. So, Absolutely. So, yeah, so can you run me through uh, quickly the eight phases? I know it's a long absolutely. one, but just a no, ab- eight phases. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I appreciate that. And what I'll say is I think there's a lot of people that have written customer experience or customer service books or done training or they've heard about where it's just like, oh, well, do something special for them yeah. or hug them, take care of them. And that's great. And yeah. do that. And that's important. The problem is, as you start to grow a team, two things happen. Number one, it's hard to ask your teammates and your employees to deliver those type of experiences if they've never had them before. Mm-hmm. Your employees might not have stayed at that amazing resort in Bali. So yeah. they can tell them about it. Yeah. And that's great. But if they haven't experienced it themselves, it's very difficult for them to replicate it. Number yep. two, when we plan on just doing special things when we think of them, mm-hmm. what happens is we get busy. Yes. And we do with other things and other projects. And then we wake up one day and we're like, oh my gosh, I haven't done anything for that client in like three months. Oh, I need yes. to do something. And then we rush to overdo something. It's kind of like in dating, yes. right? Or in relationships. <laughs> where there's these long periods of not doing anything. And then you're like, oh, it's the anniversary. Let's do something yes. really special. And it's like one day does not count for the 364 other days yes. where it wasn't as special. So what I try to do is create a system and a process that allows for consistency of experience. It allows you to know at each phase in the customer journey, what is that customer expecting? Where are they at? And what can we do for them to deliver in a way that gets them to the next phase? So to answer your question, there are eight phases, right? They all Mm -hmm. start with the letter A. Let me give you a quick overview of each one. Phase one is the assess phase. This is when a prospect is considering whether or not they want to work with you, right? In common parlance, we call this marketing and sales. This is before they've actually given you any money and they're looking at your website, your marketing and sales materials. They're talking to you. They're trying to figure out what it's like. In this phase, what we want to do is give them a preview of the experience of working with us. We don't want to sell to them. We want to show them what it's going to be like when they're a customer. We then go to phase two, the admit phase, all right? The admit phase is where the prospect admits that they have a problem or a need that they believe that you can help them with. Mm -hmm. They sign on the dotted line, they hand over their hard-earned cash, they transition from being a prospect to being a customer. 
Almost immediately after that happens, they go to phase three, the affirm stage. In common parlance, we call this buyer's remorse. All the research <laughs> shows that the second we make a purchase, our brain says, that wasn't a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> you spent too much. It was the wrong one. You should have gone with the other one. And the research also shows that as the dollar value of the thing they've purchased increases, buyer's remorse increases. So we have big buyer's remorse for a car or a house, but not a lot of buyer's remorse for maybe a pack of bubble gum, mm -hmm. right? Yep. However, if you sell a product that's $1,000 or $2,000, guess what? It's much higher. Mm -hmm. So what do we do to address that buyer's remorse and affirm the decision that they made to work with us? We then come to phase four, the activate phase. I call it activate because I want you to energize the relationship. In that first real moment of truth, I want them to know, this new customer, that doing business with you is going to be unlike any other business experience they've ever had. This is the opportunity to wow them, to surprise and delight mm -hmm. them, to let them know, holy cow, they're really excited about working with me. Because lots of times the salesperson is really excited, yeah. but the account manager who manages the activate stage is less excited. Mm -hmm. And so now they're like, oh my gosh, was the honeymoon the best part of the relationship? <laughs> like, How's this going? Like, we're yeah. just getting started and I'm expecting it to be more interesting. We then come to phase five, the acclimate phase. This is where you need to hold the hand of your customer as they get used to doing business with you. Mm -hmm. So you've done this hundreds, thousands of times, but to a new customer, it's the first time they've ever done business with you. They have no idea what's coming next. Now, Lynn, people ask me all the time, but Joey, we told them that in the proposal yeah. or we wrote about it in the manual, uh -huh. in the directions. Folks, respectfully, you don't read the stuff you sign. You don't yeah. read the directions when you get a new product or service. You try to plug it in and make it work, mm. right? So our customers are just like us. We need to hold their hand and remind them of what comes next so we can acclimate them to our way of doing business. We then come to phase six the accomplish phase. This is when the customer accomplishes the goal that they had when they originally decided to do business with you. So when they originally decided, oh, I think I'd like to hire them, what were they trying to achieve? Folks, if you don't remind them what their goal was and tell them when they cross that finish line and achieve it, they're not gonna remember. They're not yeah. gonna remember the pain point that made them hire you. They're gonna get lost in other things and focus on other things. So if we wanna really achieve this phase, we have to acknowledge when they accomplish their goal and celebrate it with them. We then come to phase seven, the adopt phase, right? This is when the customer becomes loyal to us and only us. They're 100% bought in, they're committed, they're not gonna shop around on price, they're not gonna look at our competitors, they are 100% our customer and if, and only if we've gotten them through all seven of these phases, we have the privilege to take them to the eighth and final phase, the advocate phase. Yeah. <laughs> raving fans singing our yeah. praise. Now, someone's not going to become an advocate and refer new business to you if they haven't accomplished their goal. They're mm -hmm. not going to become an advocate if they're early in the relationship and they're not even sure if you're going to be able to deliver for them. We need to time our requests for referrals to be appropriately aligned when, when the customer has experienced the high point of doing business with us. Wow. Like well, I, yeah. <laughs> and you know, I got to say, your book was very thick and thorough, but I needed to listen to everything. So I did the audio book. Then I had to buy an an a, a ebook so that I could take notes again. And then we even type up, you know, those questions at the end of the chapter, which is so amazing, by the way, you're literally asking what happens with this, you know, what happens with that? And we actually put that into an Excel spreadsheet and create like a template because we realized that we needed to almost go line by line and really answered it. And so together as a team, we had a million ideas. And the thing about um, having to really go through that is that you also don't want to overdose the, because with, after you read your book, we have all these ideas like, oh, we're going right. to do a video here. We're going to do a video there. We're going to do it because we got so excited. But then we're like looking at the whole map. We're like, imagine being a client and getting this, um, all, your, all these videos in. <laughs> so yeah, no, uh, I love it because what you realize is the thing that most entrepreneurs miss, if I may. I think most entrepreneurs, when they first start their business, are so committed to delivering their product or service that they want to over deliver. Mm -hmm. 
And so they want to give them more and more and more and like, oh, and then I'll do this for you. And then I'll do this. And here's this other PDF to read. And here's a video to watch and do, do, do. And especially with the proliferation of content marketing that has happened across the last decade, everybody thinks we've got to be given a ton of content. The problem is for a new customer, they're overwhelmed. Yeah. Too much. See, we think we're providing a ton of value. But the reality is we are smothering and drowning them yes. in all of this stuff. And they don't know what's important and what's not important. So with most entrepreneurs, what I say to them is map out and look at everything you're doing. And if it makes you uncomfortable because it's too overwhelming, yeah. <laughs> take that times 10 for them. Yeah. That's what I'm feeling. So we want to use a lot of communication tools. We want to be in regular communication with our customers, but we want to always be paying attention to are we overwhelming them? Yeah. And I love it because you helped us to understand the client, how they're thinking. So then we can really put ourselves in their shoes and go, oh, that's a lot. Oh, that's not enough. And I've got to say, um, you know, before, uh, if someone introduced me to someone that they know and said, hey, this person needs a VA and I, no, most people would just reply back and, you know, we're all proud that, oh, I replied within an hour, you know, like, oh, I'm so good. I replied within an hour and said, hey, how can I help you? But because of your book, I was, I'm always now thinking, this is actually the term we use at our company. Um, what is the N, uh, NLCA? Yeah, never yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's the NLCA version or, or, or version of this? Or how would you do the NLCA way? And so we could, we asked everything. And so I, so then I remember um, I was about to go back to my old habit of like responding to that email. But then because of your new teaching, I was like, Oh, how can I do this better? So I did quickly a loom video of myself, which takes me so quick, right? It's just like one second. Yeah. Yeah. And I just said, Hey, nice to meet you. Let me know how I can help. Exactly what I was going to type anyway. But with that, imagine now they can see who I am and they are just more inclined to book in a meeting with me and go, I actually want to talk to her. And I took it to another level where, you know, a lot of us, we work online and we CC the next person in. We're like, um, um, you know, meet my team, CC, blah, blah, blah. I started to go, okay, I'm going to do a video of me as if I'm passing them on as if we're online, uh, in real life, right? Imagine I'm like, hey, meet this that person. So I'm like, hey, da, da, da. Um, I'm going to introduce you to my teammate and I screencast over her photo and then send the video through and they just felt like, we're not just passing them down the, the, the line and we actually took that effort to introduce them to the next person. So that's just a two example that I would say that I've used that Love it was it. so easy, but I've been getting a lot of compliments over that. Oh, that's fantastic. I'd love to hear that, Lynn. Yeah, I, I yeah. use an analogy that it's like handing off a baton in a relay race. Yeah. If you watch the Olympics or if you watch relay race competitions, we've seen them hand the baton to the runner in front of them. What uh, people who are regular fans of the Olympics or of track and field will know is that if you drop the baton, it's over. Yeah. You're qualified. It's not that you have to slow down and pick it up. No, yeah. it's literally over. And the same thing is true in business. As we hand from one person to the next, if we drop that, that customer's gone. Yeah. They may stay to finish that little project or they may not leave that day. But if we don't make sure that we are affirmatively handing off, it gets real ugly real fast. Yeah, I love that you know, analogy. Really yeah. Showing people the faces. If you, if you work virtually and you can't actually have them in the room with you to do an yeah. introduction, put up their photo. You yeah. know, show what's going on so at least they can say, all right, I have a context for who it is I'm going to be speaking with. Yes, exactly. So I, oh, so amazing. Well, I'm going to break this uh, quick interview with uh, something random fun. I'm going to ask you five questions that are this or that, and you just have to quickly tell me this or that, like which one. Okay. Is. So we get to know you a little bit. All right? I pick right. one of the two options. Yeah, two options. Okay. Choose one or the other. So we get to know you. Okay. Book or movie? Ooh. Quickly, come on. Book. A book, book. okay. Yeah. I can tell. There are a lot of books behind you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Relaxing holiday or sightseeing holiday? Relaxing holiday. Okay. Absolutely. All I right. do sightseeing with the travel. I do speaking. I, I do probably 150,000 miles plus a year. So yeah. uh, I get, I get yeah. to see. When it comes to vacation, I like to put my feet up Relax. on the beach. Just Love for, it. Cool. All right. Facebook or LinkedIn? Oh, is neither an option? <laughs> this or that, if you had to choose. 
Just sorry. I mean, if I have to choose, yeah, you have to choose. I would say LinkedIn. I am not very big on social media, but if I had to choose, I'd say LinkedIn. All right. Also, all right. Freedom or hope? Come on. Freedom is incredibly important, but if you don't have hope, everything's lost. Mm. Like you can have hope and be in a state where you're not free, and that's mm. the thing that keeps you alive. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to say hope. hope. Mm. With hope, there could be freedom. Ooh, yeah, I, I like that idea. Hot or cold? Oh, cold. Every <laughs> single time. Every single time. Yeah, yeah. I have a tendency to run hot as it is. I'm yeah. the guy who doesn't drink hot liquids. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm constantly saying, you know, is there a way we can turn the air conditioner on? That kind of thing. <laughs> is Colorado really cold there? Is it Colorado cold? is definitely, well, it's definitely colder than Australia, than most yeah. parts of Australia. Um, but yeah, it's, it's less cold than people think. But it's definitely on the chillier side. I mean, you see me. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I was outside. Most people had coats on. I had a sweater on because I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, it's all good. Love it. See, we got to know you a bit more, right? Because if I tell you, talk about yourself, you don't sometimes don't know what to talk about. We, and as an entrepreneur, we end up talking about business. Whenever I ask, tell me about yourself, people just don't talk about their personal life. They just talk like right. business. So, oh, cool. Cool. Um, what is what are you up to this year? Like, what is your goal? What is what is Joey busy doing this year, and, yeah, and yeah. your ultimate goal this year? Yeah. So two things that are are really focused on this year. Number one, uh, doing more speeches. I love getting the opportunity to be in front of audiences. Uh, so doing more speeches, uh, which necessarily comes with travel. Um, one of my goals is to always been have been to more countries than I am years old. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I've been to 49 countries thus far, yeah. uh, and this year we're adding two more. So I'm going to go to the Philippines for the first time. I've yes. never been, and I'm going to go to Greenland. Ah. Uh, so I already know that I'm going to those two places, and maybe if we're lucky, some other Have ones. you been to Australia? Oh, yeah. I've been okay. to Australia several times. Please yeah. let me know when you're in Sydney. Please I let me take will. you out. On yeah, a... I, was, I was there last spring. I was probably, uh, I was in um, Sydney, Brisbane, and Melbourne over the course of about two weeks. Oh, okay. Uh, awesome. Yeah, next time you better let me know. Um, yeah. So apart from your book that people can buy from, which please go out and buy it. Like I, I literally have been, I've actually been recommending the book as a value thing. You know, when you go into a meeting or go to a lunch and you feel like you want to add value, your book is my little thing now that I'm like, hey, just want to tell you, you got to read this book. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, apart from the book, what? how else can people work with you to take their business to another level? Yeah, so a couple of thoughts. I mean, so there's the book and because people are watching and listening to this, um, let me do a, a one minute, uh, you know, uh, how shall I say, like uh, give everybody permission. Yeah. I think we live in an era where people are saying, like even when you said book or movie, right? That it's yeah. either or. I don't think that there's a wrong way to consume knowledge. Uh -huh. I think there's the way to consume knowledge that works for your brain. So we've got the book, we've got the ebook, we've got, as you mentioned earlier, yes. the audio book, which I actually narrate. So if yeah. you like the sound of my voice, I <laughs> tell you the stories in the book. Um, so that's a fun way. A uh, couple other thoughts. Um, my website, joeycoleman.com, J-O-E-Y-C-O-L-E-M-A-N.com. Yep, we'll put it in the it's description. Yep. Go. That's fun. Um, and then the last thing I would say is I've got a podcast called The Experience This Show, uh, which is all about customer experience. So it's a short show. It's 30 minutes. And in those 30 minutes are three segments. And each of the segments stand alone. And my co-host and I talk about bite-sized moments of customer delight. So we'll tell a little story and then dissect it or deconstruct it to hopefully be able to make it applicable to your business. So if you're, you know, you have a short commute and you only have, you know, 10 minutes in the car or on the train or yeah. whatever, you can listen to a whole segment. Yeah. Uh, but if you have a 30 minutes, you can listen to a whole show. So yeah. It's and on your website, you also offer coaching, right? Like you offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. Yeah. So I, so I do one-on -on work with clients. Yeah. So I do individual coaching. I also will come in and work with companies or organizations oh. and we'll map out their entire customer journey. And then of course, if, uh, if you're involved in any events or you know any events that need a speaker, that's where I spend most of my days. I do about 
50 keynotes a year. I do about 20 company workshops a year where we do a multi-day workshop. And I work with probably a dozen one-on-one coaching clients over the course. So you don't run the agency side anymore, just more like um, the coaching and speaking side? Yeah. 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 So I don't actually build out. On the consulting side, I kind of serve as a pseudo creative director and I'll help build out that stuff. Yeah. But I don't do the the pushing the pixels or the pencil. Any any new book coming out, or is this for a while? You know, Lynn, since you asked, I'm going to yeah. share something. That yeah. You get the scoop. I haven't said this on any podcast or any. <laughs> Yesterday, I started writing my next book. It's going to be oh. called Never Lose an Employee Again. Oh, wow! So, oh um, my god, that is going to be that, amazing. I believe that customer experience and employee experience are two sides of the same coin. Mm-hmm. Happy employees, happy customers. Unhappy customers, unhappy employees. And so I want to help companies get better at creating the experiences that keep their employees around as well as keep their customers around. That is going to be an amazing book because I just shared on my LinkedIn a statistic survey on what's the biggest challenge for business owners. And it was hiring and retaining people. So (laughs) I definitely think that is the biggest challenge and it's going to be that solution, that book. Oh, I'm excited with that. Let me, let me give your folks yeah. one quick statistic about this that was staggering to me. 58% of companies worldwide, 58% spend less than one week onboarding and training their new employees. And yet we want these employees to stay with us for years. Yeah. Same with customers. Why do you have a whole system and plan to onboard your customers over the course of weeks or months? But with your employees, it's one week. Yeah, right there. I know. And they are the, the backbone of everything. Without oh, the them, you can't have a mm. They're the foundation upon which yeah. your entire business is built. So what are we doing to create remarkable experiences for our employees? Yes. And, and then that will help them create it for our customers. Totally. Customer. And that leads me to my question about what is being a kind boss to you? Because to be honest, in order to implement this never lose an employee, you need to be someone that's kind and caring towards the people that you work with. So what does being a kind boss mean to you? Yeah. Lynn, I love this question. I will tell you, I have two little boys. I have a six year old and a four year old and I spend a lot of time traveling. So I am coming and going often. Mm. One of the things I always say to my boys is what are we going to do while daddy's gone? Right. Mm. And they answer three things. And the first thing they say is be kind. It's something that's in our house that we teach one of our mottos of our house. And you didn't know that when you asked the question. Yeah. But that, <laughs> yeah. that's something do. I think kindness solves 99% of the challenges you will face in your life as a human being. Yes. Oh it helps God. you get things done. Mm-hmm. It helps you create relationships with people that can help you. It helps you be less judgmental of other people and whatever they may be going through. But the thing that I think most entrepreneurs miss, I think there are many kind entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. They're very kind to their clients. They're very kind to their employees. But there's someone that they're not kind to themselves. themselves. Mm. I feel like if if there was one takeaway from this entire interview, which I've loved, that I would hope your viewers and your listeners would do is look at how kind you are to yourself or more likely how unkind you are to yourself. Because you can't, I believe, truly be kind to others if you're not willing to be kind to yourself. And if you think you're doing a great job of being kind to all your employees and all your customers, but you're not being kind to yourself, I'm telling you, there's an entire other level you can go to with your customers and your employees once you start treating yourself nicely. Oh my God. I love that. And I'm so glad that I attracted you who thinks the same as me as well. So, cause my, one of my last question was like, what did you want to leave the world with? Like if tomorrow was your last day, what would be your last message to the world? Is it that, or is there something else that you would say? I think, I think um, the last message, I mean, it's in alignment with that. I think it would be that uh, life is so much shorter and so much more precious than we think. Mm -hmm. And if we are not regularly taking time to just be thankful, Mm -hmm. to be grateful for all the amazing things, there is not a person on this planet. Well, first of all, anybody watching this, anybody watching this or listening to this is already light years ahead of what your ancestors were a hundred years ago. 
because they couldn't watch things like yeah. this. It didn't exist. They couldn't listen to things like this. It didn't exist. So they're already light years ahead. We have a tendency, I think, as humans to spend so much time comparing, especially entrepreneurs, to where we want to be. Mm. Here's my rule. If you're going to look at the big houses and if you're going to look at the multi-billion dollar companies and the jets and everything and say, oh, I don't have that. I want that. I need that. You have to be willing to spend the same amount of time looking the other way to say, what would it be like if I was living in a 200 square foot apartment with eight family members? Mm -hmm. What would it be like if I had to walk two miles to get the water that I'm going to drink today? What would it be like if um, the food that was coming in to our house every day, there wasn't enough? Like you have to be willing, yes. if you're, you're going to project out that way, you have to be willing to project that way too and give thanks for the amazing things you have. I have yet to meet a human being that doesn't have hundreds of things to be thankful for. Yeah. Even when they're in trouble, even when life isn't working well. And I don't, and I realize I'm very blessed and fortunate and, and, and privileged in that regard. And there have been times in my life when I haven't been, and I've still been better off than billions yeah. of other people. We have to do the comparison both ways. Yeah. And then ideally, I think once we do that for a while, we get to the place where we stop doing the comparison. Yeah, I love it. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really do think and it helps to be kind. If you could be grateful, it really does help for you to learn to be kind with yourself in the world. So thank you so much, Joey. I enjoyed our chat so much. Time just flew by like that. I could sit here all day talking to you. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you so much. And thank, so thank you for watching and listening. I appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you so much. I'll speak to you soon in Sydney, maybe. Bye. Thank you for joining our podcast today. We hope this interview has inspired and humbled you to be a kind boss. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and let us know what you think about our show. If you have any questions, please visit OutsourcingAngel.com. Until then, stay kind and spread love.